Welcome back to the Blue Door Pub Thunderdome. If you're another bull and Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast, schmodcast, a show about everything and absolutely nothing at all. Coming right at your ass five days a week. Sid and Shotgun is going to be Sung Min Kim of Sporting News. We're going to talk a little bit of baseball, a little bit about Korean baseball. It, it's amazing. Uh, of the people I know who don't sleep, uh, Arif is one of them. And Sung is definitely one of them as well because at all hours of the day, you know, Korean baseball, night over there, that's daytime over here, and then he's also covering American baseball. It's a grind. It is absolutely a grind. Uh, but want to talk to him about that, talk to him about uh, a little bit about the media industry as well. And, oh, I, I just realized this is two uh, Korean guests in a row, subsequent weeks since uh, James Coe last week. Uh, get in touch with my Korean roots. That's what we're doing. Tell a friend, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher, Aha Radio. Uh, someone who I don't think is Korean, but uh, I know is a big baseball fan, so he'll hopefully dig this episode. Josh Pelto, Remax, Preferred, and... Uh, here's the thing. Summer is winding down, and that usually means that people aren't going to be looking to buy or sell before uh, winter. So get a couple of those deals done before the real estate season is um, quote-unquote closed, even though it never closes, but it does slow down a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure. And if you're buying or selling, you want to get the best possible price, Josh Peltz will help you out there. He's done, I would probably say, hundreds Upper hundreds, if not a thousand deals so far, plus. Yeah. Uh, even though he's a relatively young guy, uh, he's very experienced and uh, one of the real estate agents you can truly trust right here in the metro area or greater Minnesota. He works everywhere. Uh, returns calls, all that good stuff. Give him a call 763 213 4617. Josh Pelto at Re Max Bree for the number. One more time 763 213 4617. All right, let's get into some Song Ming Kim. Welcoming on into the Blue Door Pub Studios is Sung Min Kim. Uh, he's a baseball writer. Follow him on Twitter at Sung underscore Min Kim, Sporting News, and uh, Korean baseball aficionado. Is, is, is that fair to say? Sure. I was born in Korea and then been watching baseball since then. Really. All right. Now, I, I was born in Korea, too, which um, which is odd because I've had uh, two Korean guests in a row now that have been in the sports realm. Uh, it was definitely more of a scheduling thing rather than subconsciously, I'm trying to get back to my roots because uh, I, I was adopted when I was nine months, and then I was yanked away yes. from the womb of the motherland. <laughs> where where were you born? I was you born know? in North Seoul, and then uh, uh, I, I was shipped to Busan for a little bit, and then I got shipped out. Well, yeah. I mean, sorry, I'm. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word, but uh, that's kind of real. I mean, I mean, I was born, raised there. Well, I mean, I have some, you know, adoptee friends, and I've been like, mm-hmm. kind of like wondering what that's like. To, I don't know. It's. I don't mean to get into it too deeply, but anyways. Oh, no, I mean, it, yeah, it's perfectly fine. I, it, it's something that I don't even think about. I mean, you just had a normal childhood, white parents, small working class, white farming town, and um, yeah. It, so, well, you just shipped to uh, Minnesota after you were born. Uh, yeah, uh, southeast Minnesota. I'm now living up here in the cities, and um, yeah, it's it, it's one of those things where you, you don't even think about it because it's just like, oh, this is the only thing that I know. And it, it, it's cool since you were born in Korea uh, and raised there, uh, but your English is frankly probably better than mine. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I well, first of all, no. Second of all, uh, <laughs> second of all, I lived in Maryland for ten years, mm. so and you know, and I had to go through uh, high school and college and middle school. I mean, all those kind of stuff. Uh, wow, seriously, you know, I had to learn English. Mm. And but I'm saying your English is much better than my Korean. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. All right. Okay. I was like, <laughs> my English is not better than your English. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, it, I bet you it's technically better, like grammatically, since I, I, I'm much more like I speak American rather than English. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but well, my producer Ali wanted me to ask this: Do you have a Englishified name? Uh, I know the da- name is uh, Sungmin Kim, but do you have like a American name like Todd or something? No, I, I actually don't. Because uh, I, mean, I, I, I know was... that's pretty common, right? 
It is. Yeah. I just, you know, uh, it's just that when I was younger, I'm, I kind of like tried a few names, never really liked any of them. So mm. I just kind and and my friends decided that uh, my I, I, my friends like me like calling me by my name. So mm. just kind of thought, you know, they just kind of they respected my name and I was okay with this. So I, that's that's how I go with this. Yeah. Uh, oh no, it's like um, if you have like true immigrants coming over, and then they're 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 working, and you know, sometimes they have like white bosses, and it's like, uh, what's your name? Tuong Win. No, your name is Scotty. Now I'm gonna call you Scotty. Your name is Scotty. Do they just like, <laughs> man? Do they just like assign you those names? Ah, uh, who really knows how nicknames get sprung? But ooh, maybe you can help me out with this real quick, and then uh, we'll talk some baseball. All right, so. I actually don't know the order of my Korean name. It's mm-hmm. either uh, so you can help me out. Like, what's a common last name? Because it's either Day Su Shin or Shin Day Su. Oh, it's it definitely sounds like Shin Day Su. Uh, so Shin Day Su. Shin. 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 Shin Day Su. Shin Shin Day Su. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. Oh. That sounds like a that sounds like a, you know um, that sounds like a Korean name. Okay. I can't. If, I, I never knew the order. Like uh, I saw on my birth certificate, like the name. Except I, I, I didn't know what the first name or surname was. Or so I said, no, I know. Pardon me, sorry. Uh, like I, I didn't know the order if it was day, uh, day su shin or zin de shu. But now I know. Well, in Korea you will be shin de su, but in America you will be day su shin. Oh, oh, so I was right. Oh yeah, I that's mean, how I usually roll. Yeah, in in Korea, I mean, yeah. in Korea, you uh, got a. Uh, yeah, I mean the first, the last name comes first in Korea. Yeah. That's also oh, in Japan. Oh okay, all right. Well, should have known I was right. It's one of my birth defects. But uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Let's talk about your story. So, h- how long did you live in Korea, and then when did you come over to the U.S.? I mean, I was like, I was born and raised there. I was like eleven when I moved to. Connecticut at first actually um, mm. and then uh, lived there for two years for middle school and then there was a lot of in between uh, before I moved to Maryland and then I went to a high school in Maryland and I went to uh, University of Maryland and graduated from there in 2015 with a journalism degree and lived in DC for a year and then moved back to Seoul last year oh okay uh but so Seoul's the permanent residence but you're you're back in the united states for a for a spell yeah for right now i'm traveling and hoping to do some uh media stuff while i'm here yeah all right so uh, what media outlets did you get into right away after you graduated uh i mean i had always i had been i mean i had been uh at the time i was still writing Mm-hmm. For uh, River Avenue Blues, which is a uh, independent Yankees blog, and uh, and I think even when I was in college, I was just uh, going around a, a lot of different places, tr- uh, trying to find my place in the industry. It was kind of tough because I was not really a journalist from the start of the college. I Chose the major very last minute before I had no choice but to choose a major. Mm. I was running out of I was running out of credit, so I just happened to choose journalism. But uh, it was yeah. a what it was else, a very what else was on the table? Were your parents pushing you towards like medical law? What was going on? As, uh, well, my parents would have preferred to see me do well, any science stuff. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, you know. They didn't. They were not opposed to me chasing my own dreams. Mm. Now we'll get into Korean baseball in a sec. But uh, major league wise, uh, did you have a team growing up, or were you just a, a fan of the league as a whole? When I was in Connecticut, I lived in the area uh, where it was kind of like the intersection of the Yankees fans and Red Sox fans. Oh it was like yeah, flies. And I was starting to pay attention more to the league in 2002, 2003, 
when they were, I think, around the time um, Curse of Bambino was still a thing. Mm-hmm. And there, there were um, like considerably more Yankees fans in my region than the Red Sox fans. Oh, you, you were living like right in the, the DMZ of this uh, North Korean, South Korean conflict up there. And whoever's North Korea depends who you're asking. Mm-hmm. I mean, wait, pardon me, sorry. Uh, like Red Sox fans hate Yankees fans, and Yankees fans hate Red Sox fans. So you're like right in the middle there. I think that's kind of kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I was in a middle, I was in a middle school at the time, and I mean, of course, uh, people were really into baseball. I played baseball a little bit of baseball in middle school actually. Um, mm-hmm. but um, I guess I, I don't remember why I chose the Yankees, but I did. So, what are your thoughts on Aaron Judge? I mean, it's pretty incredible. I mean, this is what happens when an uber athletic guy figures it out in the high level. He's, I mean, I I had heard about him since he was in Fresno State uh, as a you know cosplayer, mm-hmm. and you know I kind of remember wondering. If, I mean, they were talking about his talent as like a top tier, but he was raw. And also tall, so long arms, kind of like hard to control the swing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I, I actually do remember wondering, because the Yankees had three, three picks, that Yankees were going to take him in one of the three picks uh, just to roll, roll the dice. And they actually did. And it's worked out pretty well. Um, I mean, I, I thought my expectation of him when going into this season was maybe like 270 batting average with 25 home runs. <sighs> A lot of strikeouts. Mm-hmm. I think I was. I don't think I was really alone on that. But uh, of course, he's really uh, shattered all the expectations so far. Even though he's been a, in a bit of a cold streak lately. Yeah. But uh, here's the whole thing about the Yankees. Like they're they're built on superstars. And then you have this six foot six guy with uh with the the square jaw, handsome. He's got new. Uh, he's got Broadway Avenue uh, good looks, and he's got the name Judge very marketable and like yeah that makes sense for the yankees you know he's also adopted you know that right yeah yeah like he, uh, he's white parents doesn't he yeah and also uh, he has a brother in korea teaching english i i always want to know like uh, i had a bunch of college roommates who went to korea or japan or the philippines just to teach english i'm like it, that's like the whole gringo you know white person i, I want to do nothing for two years but travel like easy mm-hmm. sort of job I, I was always sort of jealous of that. It's fun. I mean, it really depends on your workplace and the agency that puts you into that workplace. But uh, um, regardless of who they teach, where they teach, um, mm. people seem to enjoy being in Seoul because uh, it's a it's a really up and coming place. It's really fun if you if you like going out, also meeting people. I mean, I don't really have a lot of friends. I didn't really have a lot of friends friends back in Seoul when I moved back. Mm. But at the but um, I managed to make I made I managed to go to events and make some English speaking friends who were there to who were there either as students either as students or uh, English teachers. So um, things have, I don't know like everyone like maybe like maybe, like ten out of ten they love it there. Uh, I haven't been back to the motherland, but if you had to compare Seoul to uh, an American city that you've been to, what, what would you compare it to? New York City. Yeah? Easily. Yeah. Easily, yeah. But Seoul's like, Seoul's more, uh, I mean, I feel like Seoul's, I have no idea how to differentiate between Seoul and New York City besides that. Seoul and other Korean cities in general are much more westernized than you would think. Mm-hmm. I mean, like there's I mean, a McDonald's and a KFC that you can easily oh, get to. Oh, much more. Yeah, much yeah. more. <laughs> Even I mean, the fashion in the streets. Um, yeah. People love um, t-shirts or shirts or pants or whatever that mm. have um, English English letters. They love the uh, Major League Baseball mat, um, merchandises, actually. Oh yeah. The I, Yankees, Red Sox, yeah. yeah. I, see, it would be cool to be into fashion over in Korea because you could just make one size for every everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Who would you say right now is, is the best Korean 
baseball player in in the world, whether he's MLB, KBO, who would you tab? And at this moment, yeah. I mean, okay, so it has to be Korean born, right? Yeah, uh, Korean born, yeah, Korean heritage, whichever. Oh, um, I want, I want, I want to say the top player right now is uh, Hyung Wood Choi of Kia Tigers. Mm. I mean, obviously playing back in Korea, he's putting up pretty, I mean, with ridiculous um, offensive numbers for the Tigers. He was signed as a free agent uh, in the winter. He used to play for the Samsung Lions, but, you know, of course, he was a top player, and then Tigers paid him like a top player he is, he is and now he's hitting, uh, I'm looking at his stats right now, he's hitting 373 uh, batting average, 1.160 OPS, 22 home runs. So, uh, and currently, the I mean, easily the top offensive player in the league right now. And... I think I believe there were scouts last year that, you know, came to some games to see if he were a fit, you know, major league. But um, I don't know what they thought. But he was he's also what he's also 33 years old right now. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I think impact if he were maybe like 27, 28, um, he would have had much better chance to go to major leagues if he wanted to. Yeah. I feel like Major League uh, Baseball is weird, though. It's like guys usually don't even get to the show until they're 29. And we're in the NFL. 29 is usually when guys' careers start wrapping up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, how's uh, Chan Ho Park regarded over there? Oh, uh, oh, it's great. I mean, I grew up watching Chan Ho Park. Mm-hmm. He's, I mean, he's regarded as one of the biggest um, icons, sports icons and idols. Of, of the nation, and um, is he the Michael that, Jordan of Korean baseball? Uh, you know that that's a good comparison. I'd hey. say. Um, back in the mid to late nineties, when Korea, um, South Korea, got into a economic hardship, they had to lend money from uh, IMF, International Monetary Fund, mm-hmm. to uh, get out of, get out of the uh, slump that they were in, and. I think, and it was it was not a, it was not. I mean, Korea was at the time. I mean, before that, Korea was you know up and coming, rising as one of the world's uh, biggest powers, and then so it had a crash because of that. Yeah. So um, people were having a hard time, but um, the common thing or common common uh, sentiment is that Chano Park, a Korean guy, um, being in uh, Major League Baseball alone and dominating the hitters. Um, every five day during the season, really, uh, really gave people courage and motivation mm-hmm. to get get through the hard times. That's I mean that sound that yeah. may sound too dram- dramatic. That may mm-hmm. sound too dram- dramatized, but um, it's true. Um, people really paid the shit. He carried the pressure. He carried the pressure of um, the whole nation when he was with mm-hmm. the Dodgers and the Rangers. And uh, I mean, when people say. He really got people through the hard times. Um, he he really did. Yeah, I feel like the way that you're talking about him, like I, I only know like surface American baseball stuff. He played for the Dodgers. He grew that that All Star game pitch to Cal Ripken, so he get a home run, etc. But it, it sounds like he is like a, a pseudo Manny Pacquiao to the Philippines. Chano Park it was to the Koreans. Um. I, I guess that I guess that's correct. I I mean, you know, I've never really been to Philippines, but I would guess that he's a huge pride of the nation right now. Oh yeah, so they, I, I think they're they're rebuilding the islands. They're like reshaping it in so it looks like Manny's face. Like that's how big of a deal he is. Is that is that really? Nah, probably not. The, okay. Uh, I, I remember because I'm half Japanese too, and I, I remember growing up, you know, playing baseball and, and pitching. I was like, I love pretending to be Chan Ho Park or uh, Hideo Nomo when they're both on oh, the yeah. Dodger staff together. I was like, that that was awesome. And mm-hmm. I, you know, um, growing up loving sports, you, you didn't see any Asians in the NBA or the NFL to speak, but baseball, you know, Asians were all over the place. And I think I think subconsciously that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards baseball in the first place because like, oh, 
guys that look like me are playing professional sports. I mean, you didn't really see uh, um, Asians in NFL or in NHL, really. Yeah. Um, and it's not like MLS is really big in the states. I don't even know if I don't really know MLS that well. I don't even know if Minnesota has an MLS team. Uh, we do. Uh, I think our team just went to MLS. That that, oh. that, sh that shows how how closely I follow it. All right. Yeah. Well, me neither. Yeah. The all right, all right, so uh, Korean baseball, and I, I I see you tweeting at all hours of the day because you, you you talk about Major League Baseball, but then the deep cuts, the Korean baseball, uh, the KBO, Korean Baseball Organization. Um, so, someone who knows nothing about KBO, give me a little introduction. Uh, Korean baseball organization. It was uh, it, it not inaugurated in nine. <coughs> excuse me. So I mean, Korean baseball. Before that, they had you know high school baseball, mm -hmm. and they had a uh, in I mean in in this industrial baseball. But um, uh, it was uh, excuse me um. The you know, but the in nineteen uh, eighty two I believe was the original. I mean the first year of the league, and they at the time they had six teams, and now in twenty seventeen uh, it's expanded to ten teams. It's kind of incredible because it's it's not a it's not a big country at mm -hmm. all. Uh, they do have cities. Um, they do have big cities within the country. And also, there are three teams in Seoul. Yep. Big city. Um, one, uh, two of the teams uh, share a ball ballpark, and another team plays in a dome. And uh, the 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 Doosan Bears have won the past two seasons. That, that is correct. Hey. The, the Korean the Korean series. Yeah. Now, who are the the Yankees of KBO? Like, who's the historically dominant team over there? Uh, the Tigers franchise. Yeah. The Tigers, um, the Kia type. Well, they, right now they're called the Kia Tigers. Mm -hmm. But um, back in the day when they were the Hate Tigers. Yep. Um, they had a dynasty going on. They won. So in, so it's so 1982 was when it started. Mm -hmm. So. Like I want so this is the twenty sixth. Wait, no, I, I'm trying to do math here, and I'm jet lag. <laughs> it's all good. So this is so this is the this is the uh, this is the thirty sixth season mm -hmm. of the league. Uh, the the Hete Tigers uh, won the championship nine times. So basically, one out of four times. Oh wow! Of, of the league's existence, they won the championship. Now the you mentioned the Kia Tigers, uh, the Samsung Lions, and uh, I see there's a team called the LG Twins. Is, is that all uh, corporate sponsorship? You know, the Kia, the LG, the Samsung. That is true. Yeah. Oh. That is true. Um. Yes. Um. LG. You know what that is. I mean, yeah. electronics. Samsung also. Yeah. Uh, Kia. You know, car company. Uh, yeah. Because I. I yeah. This is my naivete. Like I didn't know. Like uh, I obviously knew that there were companies, but I was like, oh, maybe there is a city called Samsung in Korea. I don't know. There'll be. I mean, there is a. Well, in in Korea, there is a. I mean, in Seoul, there is a, yeah. a subway stop named Samsung. Mm. I, I I don't think it's really named after. I I I don't know what it's really named after. Yeah. I haven't really done my research on that yet. Now, is the ambiance and the fanfare of kbo sort of like um you know what you saw from the japanese and have, have you seen the movie mr baseball not yet ah oh, there yeah. are a lot of baseball movies that i haven't seen yeah i mean i'm just i mean i love i like watching movies when mm. i'm kind of forced to but yeah it's not a lot of cases that i kind of like watch movies by my own motivation gotcha but uh, just to paint a picture i, I feel like the Asians, especially with baseball, it's much more festive as opposed to baseball watching over here, which is more lethargic, sort of chilling, having a beer, et cetera. Uh, I feel like the Asians like really get into it and really are festive about it. That's true. Yeah. Um, 
Japanese baseball, you see a lot of, I mean, trumpet sounds, I mean, cheers songs, and Korean baseball is much more, they incorporate a lot of pop songs, mm-hmm. catchy tunes. Uh, also, um, it, cheerleading is huge, and every, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it besides that. Yeah. It's really fun, and also the seats are really, it's not, it doesn't really cost you arms and legs mm. to go to a game so it's really pop because it's fun and it's cheap it's really popular among young people to go to games i i feel like uh, if you brought a trumpet to a baseball stadium in, here in the states I, I feel like you would get shot by like the third inning well i don't know if they allow guns in the stadium as well but well yeah, yeah this is america okay. that's how we roll yeah <laughs> all right so um do you have a how prevalent is uh, like former American major league players coming over and playing KBO? What do you, what, what do you mean by prevalent? Like, um, like, is there a handful? Is there ten, twenty former MLB oh, okay. Americans coming over? Uh, so each team are allowed to have three foreign players. Mm-hmm. So that makes it a maximum of thirty foreign players in a league because there are 10 teams and they pretty much scout a lot of different places to get players that they think would translate well into the KBO like um, during the off season you can see the scouts in let's say Dominican Dominican Winter League or uh, Puerto Puerto Rican League or during the season you can see the scouts uh, re- looking for replacement players in the uh, minor leagues or in the, or even independent ball. Yeah. So um, depends on the team as well. I mean, some teams cash in m- a lot of money for their foreign players, and some teams, uh, well, not as much. Like the Hanwha Eagles currently have three former ma- former major league players. They signed a lot of. I mean, they signed uh, Alexi Ogando, Carlos Villanueva, and uh, we signed Willen Rosario. And mm. those are recognizable names for people that have been following the Major League Baseball for a while. Yeah, uh, I'm just scrolling through some of these rosters, and, and, and it's kind of funny how the the foreign players stick out. Where you go through the roster, it's like uh, Ryu J. Cook, um, uh, Cha, that's a Cha Wu Chan. J- and then Luis uh, Jimenez. Oh, he he well he was just released. Oh damn it! He was just released. Um, um, and you know, and James Loney is actually taking his spot. If you remember who he is. Oh, I vaguely remember that that jabroni. James James Loney, a uh, former top prospect with the Dodgers. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to be their first baseman of the future with them, but uh, yeah. But he hasn't really. I mean, he had a few awesome seasons, but. I don't think he was really as consistent mm-hmm. as people thought he could be. But um, he did play for the Mets as recently as last season, I believe. Uh, oh, well, I guess we'll have to just go to pitcher Hank Sosa on the LG Twins. as the Henry uh, Sosa? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah Hank. Former, uh, yeah. Where are you seeing it? Because it's Henry Sosa. Oh, well, I just went with Hank because I was trying to make it make him stick out more. But we'll go with Henry. Okay. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah. he's a... Uh, Former Astros pitcher, actually. Oh, gotcha. The all right. So as far as pay wise, uh, I know they're not making major league money, but comfortable living, pretty damn good living for these guys in KBO. Well, that's the reason why they're there. Mm. Because it's a much better atmosphere and much better pay than you know strolling strolling around the minor leagues. Yeah. So, um, a lot of players actually um, have. I mean, just the word of industry, the word of mouth in the industry. A lot of players uh, do request their agents to look for an Asian baseball team, whether it be in Taiwan or Japan or Korea. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they can uh, play, get an everyday uh, playing opportunity, but also um, um, earn more money than how they would in the minor leagues. Yeah. yeah I suppose getting, you know, some decent cash and playing in front of a, a raucous crowd uh, in some of these Asian leagues, beats the hell out of uh, riding a bus around Birmingham and Tuscaloosa and whatnot in mm-hmm. double A ball. That is true. Yeah. 
All right. So the oh, what's your short term plan? Um, you know, keeping covering uh, KBO, keep covering yes. MLB. What are you gonna Both. do? Oh yeah. I mean, well, I'm still finding myself. I mean, finding my place in this industry, but I'm also having fun at the same time. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much my goal. Um, just keep moving. Yeah. Towards the forward direction. And at the same time, um, have fun. Yeah. And I am having a lot of fun, really. Yeah, I mean, that that's the really awesome thing about sports media. It, it's so fun, and you're, if you're able to make a career out of it, you'll go through life never having to get a real job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ooh, I, I, how, all right, so Major League Baseball is extremely popular in South Korea. I feel like being the 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 one who can speak English, but also Korean being that sort of gateway of doing television presenting over there for Major League Baseball. I feel like that that's a, a niche you could definitely see yourself in. That is true, but at the same time, um, there are already a good amount of broadcasters in Korean TV that specialize in that. Eh, kick them out. See, I don't. Uh, you know that they're they're the people that I look up to. Yeah. See, my, my whole thing is like I, I'm more of an NFL guy, so I'm trying yeah. to force myself to learn Mandarin and some Korean because I, I think NFL is gonna start getting popular over there. So then I can be that gateway guy. Because that's, like, that's fun. Yeah. Like how, how many like how many people who speak fluent uh, Chinese actually are into the NFL? Like, I, I don't I, think those those circles cross. I really, I honestly do not know. I don't think the popularity of NFL is really there yet in Korea. But some people do watch it. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, it's not a huge thing here yet. Some, I mean, I certainly pay attention to it because mm-hmm. I used to live in uh, the Washington D.C. area, and yeah. I, I used to go to a lot of Redskins games. Ah, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So, what's your take on how they're handling Kirk Cousins? I mean, the popular opinion is that they're messing it up, right? Yeah. And certainly it does seem like they're me- they messed up. Slash, um, the former GM Scott McClellan wanted to sign him long term, like mm. a few years ago, but the ownership balked at it. And in the hi- in the hindsight, that's you know that was a pretty stupid move. But at the same time, um, C- Cousins is a quarterback that's uh, not without flaws. And I don't really blame the ownership for, you know, trying to see him more out of him before they feel like committing more money to him. But at the same time, I feel like they dragged it on for such a long time that um, Kirk Cousins don't feel, really feel like he doesn't have the respect of mm-hmm. the uh, people. I mean, people in the ownership anymore. So I wouldn't be surprised seeing him let the team like a Browns or 49ers next season. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it's funny that uh, Daniel Snyder, for his history of just throwing money at, at, at people, like this is the one time that you're going to be cheap. You know, the, the one time you have a decent quarterback in the past 20, 30 years, you're going to be cheap. All right. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm cu- I've been always curious about that. I mean, you know, this is a guy who really who wanted to uh, um, trade all the high draft picks for RG3. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. It wasn't him. Also, it wasn't really his call that drafted Cousins. It was a, um, is it Shanahan? Yep. Mike Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's it? What's his? Uh, Carl Shanahan is done. Okay, I don't. It's been a while since I thought about those guys. So yeah, uh, yeah like, Kyle's head coach in San Fran now. So I think that's where Cousins is heading next year. Yeah, that's that could be a case. Um, yeah. We'll see. But um, once if that happens, um, they better have a quarterback. They, have a, they better have a quarterback plan or <laughs> yeah. right, they're going uh, back to the Rex Grossman days. Oh, that, that, that's a good callback. Yeah, that's a good, that, that's a deep cut, man. Uh, all right, two questions and then I'll, I'll get out of your hair for the day. Uh, who's the who's your favorite Korean musical artist right now? Oh, man. Uh, you had to pick one. Red Velvet. Now, what genre are they? K-pop. They're... They're a girl girl yep. group, and I hear their songs all the time in the public and in the radio yeah. back in Korea. I, I feel like K-pop is one of those things that is just going to keep growing in popularity. I feel like it's going it, to it stylistically is meshing into American um, like pop music 
like you, you get some of the the shades in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no idea. I mean, it seems certainly it seems bigger that a bigger the K-pop popularity in U.S. Some certainly seems bigger than it, it was before um, mm. Gangnam, Gangnam, Gangnam Style. Yeah. But um, and so a fun fact about my fun fact about my um careers that i've also been i've also dj k-pop in uh in clubs in dc a few times oh really and you know people love it people yeah. really do that was yeah that was one of my things back back when i lived in dc oh that's awesome now uh, you, you mentioned the gangnam style guy or it's a side like uh, how how is he regarded in korea i mean he's one of the biggest names of course um yep. he's been around since 2001 Mm. So, you know, and he's always been known for his outlandish presentation, and uh, he's always been the guy who was kind of edgy and outlandish. And it's no surprise that his uh, uh, Gangnam Style video has blown up because it's so funny slash surreal slash so well produced and shot because he's he's a creative genius that has a lot of experience uh funny story i when that song came out and got really big i I sort of got cajoled uh or peer pressured into uh being dressed up yeah for halloween and uh all right so i got the suit down i got the shoes down i got everything down and and then I, i figured out the dance and then, uh, mm-hmm. then I, I won a costume contest for a four hundred dollar bar tab, and, and, th- and that was four hundred dollars. Yeah, that was not bad. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I would dress up every day just for that bar tab. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Oh, uh, also, since you're a Maryland alum, I, I need to thank you for Stefan Diggs. Oh yeah. Oh, jeez, I cannot believe he lasted till the fifth round. Mm. Because I mean, even before the draft, I thought I mean, people, some scouts were talking him as like a first or second round kind of guy yeah. but because um maryland had a really bad team when he was there he was like the only guy that really stood out among you know and there and i forgot the quarterback's name i think his last he, he was just not a great quarterback well, uh, yeah. his last season like maryland had so many quarterback in, uh, injuries they had a linebacker playing quarterback at the end of the season Oh yes, I mean the linebacker was. Um, I think the linebacker, the, that's the lefty quarterback. The linebacker was a four-star quarterback, four-star prospect out of high school. So I think at first he was a good quarterback, but yeah. he kind of like switched to linebacker towards yeah. the yeah. Later yeah. minor details. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, he, he's a great player. Hopefully, he can stay healthy, and I, I think he's ready to become one of the better wide receivers in the league. Oh yeah, no, same year. I mean when. The Vikings played at the Redskins yep. last year. I, I held my breath every time on uh, Bradford drew to uh, Stefan Diggs. Yeah, because you know um, Stefan, he can make stuff happen, and he's he's a playmaker. That's how I describe it. All right. Um, so, what, what's your take on Maryland's football uniforms? Uh, I feel like they're pretty binary. People either love or hate them. I I mean I'm biased. I like it. Yeah. But um, uh, I mean when it comes to football uniforms, uh, I guess my favorite is USC. Yeah. USC or Penn State. I mean, as much I feel dirty saying, I'm not gonna say anything. I really feel dirty saying anything good about Penn State's bubble team. Yeah. Uh, I wanted, uh, yeah, yeah. Nah, you, you know, from I, I feel like clean cut classic is, is always gonna be. You know, it's what they call classic. They'll always be preferential to like whatever Oregon's doing nowadays. But yeah, such is life. But but um, you know um, I think if so the Maryland football is supposed. I mean, it's on the rise. They had the new coach. Uh, they hired a new coach two years ago, and then he's been a wizard at mm. recruiting. So if I mean, once their reputation as a football team rises nationally, I think people will accept the uniform a little more. Right. Yeah, just man. been that they just been that just been that they haven't been a good football team uh, for the past decade or so. That you know, it kind of makes it easier to dismiss the uniform. Uh, so what's coming up from you? What should people be looking for uh, writing media-wise? Same, just a lot of baseballs. Bye-bye. Sorry, I was saying bye to my friend. Okay.
um, a lot of baseball in general. Um, and hopefully during the Olympics, uh, Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, I'll get to do some stuff as well. Oh, Work. yeah. Yeah, that's right. That, that That's coming up this year. That's cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, you have any? No, oh, no, really appreciate you coming in, man. Uh, follow uh, Sung on Twitter at Sung underscore Min Kim. And, yeah, door's always open, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Good stuff from Sung Min Kim. Uh, love talking to him. Love, uh, yeah, fellow hustlers, people who are – I always drop the fellow hustlers line, except I, I do truly mean it. It isn't uh, hyperbole. It isn't uh, just – or saying something for the sake of saying something. You know, the people actually work, grind, never really bitch, and have a just a passion for what they're doing. And Sung definitely has that. And frankly, I'm kind of jealous. I wish that I loved football as much as he loves baseball, or I even uh, st- still liked baseball, for that matter. Because that was my sport growing up. Yeah, it really was. I was Matt Lawton all the time. I just can't. It was Kirby Puckett. Yeah, something you can have passion about though is making money and having a great start to a career. Anderson Windows is hiring, and hey, you want to make some money? Two hundred production jobs right now at their Bayport plant, right up there in beautiful Northeast Metro, uh, starting at fifteen sixty per hour. Yeah, that's right, fifteen sixty an hour. That's what you get to start. Good job, great brand. Great company and a good way to get some uh, do re mi up in your pocket. So visit andersoncareers.com, Anderson with S E N on the end, or go through the link on our sponsor page. Hit that up. Uh, we're out of here for today. Enjoy your Thursday. iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. That's where to get the show. And plus, if you enjoy us, spread the word. Tell a friend. That's the only way that we grow. Turn someone on to the show. Do it up. Uh, thanks, producer Allie Jerome, for making me not sound so stupid today. But for Sung Min Kim, I'm Andy Carlson saying and Young. Sayonara and bye-bye. Talk to you Friday. listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome. Andy Carlson here, Purple for the Win Podcast, letting you know that we'll be here all off-season long talking the Vikings angle on everything. Combine, pro days, free agency, the draft, OTAs, training camp in 2017, baby. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app.